edit. All right. Welcome, everybody. We kicked off with the Jackson State Sonic Boom of the South. They have a playlist on Spotify. Okay, let me share our ad. So just making sure that you all have access. And if you are interested in the playlist, because you just want to hear some bands, I am sharing. Tanisha, your, your Zoom pig look just like you here. <laughs> I love when people do that. <laughs> so we are going to welcome you all with us this afternoon. And also, I'm going to drop the Zoom link here in the chat uh, because we want you to send this out and share it with someone else that you may know, even if it's by text. We're like, hey, we are celebrating our line, my D9, right? We should, we're celebrating who we are. Um, and if you know somebody, share it with somebody like Corey. I'm getting ready to send this over to Kim and see if she want to jump on. Okay. You know, like you just don't know. You never know. They may, they may not, but just know that we celebrate it. And before we close out this evening, um, we also are going to ask you to tag someone to so that that is a, a, an advocate for CS or an advocate of yours um, to let them know that we appreciate them and we want them to be a part of our celebration as we conclude our CS homecoming for the month of February. Um, it's been a month. It's been a month full of, of events and adventures and we're gonna conclude by celebrating um, everyone and I'm here co-hosting with tanya we are missing our other co-host a uh, co-host i can't talk our other co-host uh dominic sanders um who is a member of cap apple Psi. he is the state represent like i'll say state representative he is the state department uh point of contact state coordinator for south carolina for computer science education and he just got called in with the governor so <laughs> We are going to pick up the slack, um, if there is any, and uh, start off with a roll call. Everybody know what a roll call is? And I, I don't see everybody. So so we're going to see. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, don't see, I don't see everybody. But we're going to start off with a roll call. And let me see. Let's see if I can go down the list. Make sure I don't miss somebody. Davis got the rolling, the rolling background, <laughs> making me feel bad. <laughs> you know it. Wait, David, did you say David got a rolling background? Well, it keeps every time I, I scroll past, he's got a different what? He's got a different background. <laughs> I mad. That's that's all right. <laughs> well, let's 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 um. How about we go around and I'll start out. Well, I guess I'll start off with what I see. I'm going to say, do we have any representation from Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated? Most definitely. Uh, Tanya here in Houston. Aisha Robinson here in Temple, Georgia. Tanisha Gorman Henry from South Bend, Indiana. Ooh, beautiful. Look at all y'all. Okay, welcome, ladies. Welcome. Representing. Welcome. <laughs> Definitely representing. Representing. <laughs> Do we have any representation from Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated? David, you ain't have to change screen. You ain't have to change screen. Okay, we're gonna say, are there any representation from Kalpha Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated? Yes, yo, 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 uh, David Lockett, uh, originally National Alumni Chapter uh, by way of Washington, DC. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Any representation from Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated? Ooh. 
we're going to give some love to, to, I mean, I'm going to give some love, even though they're not here. Any representation from Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated? Pamela Schofield from South Carolina. Ooh. I love it. You're going to make me pull mine down too. I don't know if you can see it. Shana I Glass. see it, girl. Shana Glass from Houston, Texas. Definitely representing, definitely representing. Love it, love it. Let's let's keep it rolling. I uh Iota Phi Theta fraternity. Any representation tonight? And as we're going through this, if you know someone, drop it in the chat so we can try to reach out. I love that. <laughs> Lavanda, I love that. Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. That be me, that be me. Last created, best designed, the greater ladies of the Divine Nine, Sigma Gamma Rho, Corey Coburn Shiflet out of Austin, Texas, Mu Beta Sigma Chapter out of Round Rock, Texas. We welcome you and thank you so much. I'm glad you paused, Pat. Glad you paused. Uh, any representation from Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. So I'm having some major technical difficulties, but yes, Michelle Pierce representing from Charlotte, North Carolina, Z5. So sweet. <laughs> Love it. And any representation tonight from Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated? All right, so I'm going to pause because I know we know someone who represents these. If you do and you have a cell number, if you do and you have an email address, if you do and you have, I mean, David is going all out. Um, if you do, we ask that you share the Zoom link, which, let's see if I can find it real quick. Share the Zoom, Zoom link with them so that, oh, we, okay, Michelle, see so you getting back in. Share the Zoom link with them to let them know that we are representing this line. We just want them to come by. So we're going to have a little fun. We're going we're gonna to have some conversations, especially if they are in representation of computer science education. So let's chat. And Tanya, jump in. And anybody else that want to jump in, let's make this informal. Oh, she gonna be upset. She gonna be upset. She just missed roll call, but that's okay. She can, when she jump in, we're gonna represent. So um, why is there a need for the, for the nine different organizations? Well, look at us, real talk, look at us. And again, definitely come off of, come off of mute if you wanna share. Why were these organizations started in the first place? And what was the social and political climate at the time of when they were started? <laughs> yes, definitely. Go ahead. Oh, a Sigma Gamma Rose found in 1922. It is the only, only divine non sorority founded as a predominantly white institution. We made a way where there was none. We weren't among our people, and we made a way less than 20 miles away from the. Uh, the Grand Wizard of the KKK, the, the headquarters. Sigma Gamma Rho was founded in Indianapolis, Indiana, and founded by all educators. So we have been pushing education in the community since we were founded. And like I said, we were the last sorority, but we were designed for greatness. So we still, education is still a top priority. Um, I've, I've taught math, I've taught science, one of our key uh, projects is our uh, youth symposium where we are still connecting the youth in the community with education and opportunities and scholarships and internships, whatever they need to be successful role models, help, or a listening ear, mm -hmm. we are there. So Sigma Gamma Rho represents all of the greatness that can be found in computer science and diversity. I love it. Love it. Love it. Anyone else would like to share? Yeah. And the question is, who can join these organizations too? Right. We are. 
Well, I'm going to start. I'll start because I know Tanya looking around the corner and everything, but you must be college educated to join these organizations first and foremost, right? Am I, am I speaking truth? You must be college educated. And everyone in here as educators yeah, are yeah. College, college educated. Mm -hmm. so, so that is the first the first that's that's what what I was told. that's a qualification you mm -hmm. must and whether you are collegiate or alumni and I mean even if you pledged in allegic you are now alumni right mm -hmm. <laughs> so um it is it that is that is one of the fundamental um fundamental qualifications for joining these organizations mm -hmm. anybody else want to add well, I'll just jump in. I believe, you know, we all have um, a service component, right? And and for those organizations that were first and for the fraternities on the different campuses, um, they're meeting a need, right? The collegiate structure that uh, existed at institutions at that time um, had sororities and fraternities, but as in other avenues and societal um, constructs, we weren't welcome right so what do we do we create our own right but I, I guess is that the first we for fraternities and sororities are the first for us by us are we the first fubus <laughs> but meeting a need right meaning so that we could have community and serve um the greater good i believe is a premise of all of our organizations mm -hmm. So something we've done is actually, and I'm going to fix the polls right here. So something we've done is we have laid out all of the different organizations and kind of how they got their start. So even if you if you hadn't shared yet, okay, okay, okay. I see who jumping in. I got the way. Um, <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Um, but we're going to go through and we're just going to walk through each of the different, different uh, yeah, the different fraternities and sororities and just share a little bit about it. And if it's yours, feel free to come off mute if you would like to be the one to share a little bit about your fraternity and sorority and maybe tell us a little something about something about your sorority or fraternity uh, that you are now currently a part of. Um, this is a, a quote that Dominic posted in here, being a member of a Greek organization does not mean that you are better than anyone else. It means that you have the responsibility of helping your community to become better. You are a person who can lead your people into success. You are a person who can change, be the change you want to see in the world. You are a person who owes it to the world to make it a better place for the next person. Greek life is more than mere parties, t-shirts, and step shows. It is a way of life that involves serving the community, teaching others and loving your man, mankind as a lifetime commitment. Y'all, that word, lifetime commitment. Everybody on here understand that? <laughs> it's a lifetime commitment. You just leave it there. So with that, I'm going to go back and check again. Do we have any members uh, representing from any brothers from Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated? All right, so I'm going to say AFIA was founded by seven men on the campus of Cornell University on December 4th, 1906. It's the first Black Greek organization. Anyone want to speak up for their sorority? I know time you're pausing. <laughs> Just trying to let others others speak. I have contributed. Well, I'll just say I was we were the first um, on the campus of Howard University where our current vice president actually attended, which still blows my mind uh, because not just a member of our sorority, but from coming from an HBCU just speaks volumes um, 
and like we we pointed out the the commitment that we that we have to make to lead and to serve our communities um that's kind of to me an ultimate public service action right um so thank you so we, much Tanya. yes you founded on the premise of service to all mankind so you kind of mentioned that and it it is in line with uh the quote that dominic that we just shared and i am you're right i didn't finish so i'm currently a member of uh, mucap omega here in the houston area there are probably ooh, 12 or 15 graduate cha chapters in our Houston area, but we actually just did the Houston metropolitan area chapters just hosted a black business expo this past weekend. Um, so just demonstrating the commitment of collective work together um, and we offered that for the community in the fifth ward region of Houston, Texas. So it's a pre pretty exciting event. Beautiful, thank you so much. Let's see, would anyone like to share about Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated? Hey, we've got a, a little bit to share. Uh, we have a few minutes. So I, I, I pledge Kappa, Kappa Alpha Psi at uh, Fisk University. And one thing that drew me to the fraternity was uh, the you know, the pillars of success, you know, you've got all these different fraternities, all these different organizations, but, you know, what is, you know, what's the driving force or what's the driving factor? And the biggest part to me, you know, besides, you know, other things was the academic scholarship uh, and the community service. Uh, you know, one thing that, you know, we were always instructed to do was give back was, how are you giving back to your community? And, you know, that's something that I've always kind of, you know, stuck with to this day, uh, you know, uh, part of Cap Alpha Psi, you know, is, is looking at, you know, the pillars of community service, looking at academic scholarship and looking at social welfare. You know, how are those different pieces coming to existence? You know, you've got your step shows, you've got different organizations, you know, you've got different events. You know, as Capas, we've got things called the Guide Right Foundation, you know, which promotes, you know, not only, you know, exceptional education, but, you know, provide guidance to youth because a lot of times our youth, they need that guidance, you know, when they're, you know, they're, we're reaching out to high schools, you know, colleges alike, you know, how can we get those, you know, those high school students or undergraduate students to, you know, look at different duties and, you know, how can we get them to be successful, you know, not only in their, you know, their academic, you know, upbringing, but their overall success. So, you know, looking at those principles, you know, achievement is at the forefront, you know, and when you think about any fraternity, you know, you want achievement to be one of the pillars. So, you know, that's something I've always stuck by to this day, you know, uh, you know, looking at some of our undergraduates, looking at some of the, uh, you know, the Neils that are coming in, uh, you know, when you look at all the fraternities, you know, look at those goals, you know, look at those pillars of success, you know, what are they driving you the most? So, you know, that's all I can always say, you know, academic ach achievement, you know, and, uh, you know, achievement above else. So just a little bit about Cap Alpha Psi. Thank you so, so much for sharing. Yes. Do we have any representation that joined us from Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity? So I'll just share that this was founded by four men on the campus of Howard University on December 5th, 1911, and it's the first international fraternal organization. Mm -hmm. How about Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated? How about yourself, Shana? Duh. No, I actually have another Sara who's on the call. So I'm pausing to see if maybe she would want to share. But I definitely can, but I'm going to pause. So I will say, from my sorority, um, that we were found about 22 illustrious women on the campus of Howard University on January 13, 1913. Um, 
these founders actually were one of the first to take action in the suffrage in the suffrage movement. Um, but I, I want to say it's all centered, just as many of you have said, around service, which was the reason I actually pledged myself. Um, got a lot going on, and I, I kind of wanted to center myself in giving back to my community beyond just being um, an educator. I feel like it's it's it mm -hmm. is imperative to give back to the community. Um, currently, I serve as a as a member of North Harris County alumni chapter, which is one of the 10 chapters here in Harris County in the Houston area. And it's the second largest in our area. And we are currently prepping for Delta Days, which is actually at Washington DC in two weeks. So we're actually prepping and getting ready for our, um, this, the month of March is Sisterhood Month for us. So we're prepping to grow in sisterhood, which is another another aspect uh, that brings me joy being with my Saras. So hopefully uh, excited to learn more about each of you all. Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. I'll speak. I will speak on behalf of Bobby oh, okay. Fraternity okay. Incorporated. I'm about to text. I'm literally about to text. Go ahead. Get it, Zaz. Get it. <laughs> yes. So on the campus of Howard University, three wonderful founders near the reservoir, also incorporated Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. They have this lovely constitutionally bounded organization, which is Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, along with Phi Beta Sigma. Come on, so Where they were incorporated, founded at Minor Hall at Howard University, respectfully yeah. January 9th, 1914 and January 16, 1920. We are the only, let me stress this one more time, the only, only. organization yes. bounded. <laughs> snap, 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 snap. I'm gonna let Carla <laughs> and Michelle say some more. Oh, you gonna let me go, so Oh, thank you. Come Oh, history lesson. Okay, okay, I can I can take it from there. We are our job is to is similar to all the other um sororities, pretty much. Our focus is finding womanhood, scholarship, community service. It's a really big focus on finding womanhood because the thing is you are to represent finding womanhood no matter where you go because someone is always watching. He's watching. And you never know who wants to be what you are. So be careful in what you say, what you do, and how you act. And that's where the final womanhood comes from. I became a Zeta because my science teacher was not Zeta. Mm -hmm. And I just remember the royal blue and the white that she would wear all of the time. But I was a kid then, and it so happened when I um, was in college, and she found out, she aligned me with some of the, the ladies on campus at Cleveland State, and I became a Zeta, January 15th, 1996, at 12.47 p.m. And then we celebrated Final Womanhood the next day and our anniversary and all that type of stuff, literally the next day. I remember like it was yesterday because I didn't have any clothes because I was poor being an undergrad, but I had some, my uh, mentor bought all my stuff for me and she's still my mentor to this day. And I got an opportunity to teach with her when I started in my career. And we were founded by what we call them, my sobers, the Five Pearls. And together with the founders of Phi Beta Sigma, they founded Zeta Phi Beta on Howard University campus, like quite a few of the fraternities and sororities. And to piggyback with Carla, that's also part of CSTA along with Michelle. We love y'all. We really do love y'all. To Carla defense, yeah, it was because of a family member of mine persuaded me from being a Delta and hit me up at a family reunion and said- It, it was you too? <laughs> yeah, me too. To focus on quality versus quantity. And, and we can all say that respectfully with our own <laughs> organizations, but I'm gonna say this. To call a defense, I had a math teacher that was a Zeta. They took the time to mm -hmm. show me what I needed to be remediated in. I had a band teacher who recommended me as drum major to take the time to show me how to play another principal instrument besides saxophone to play an oboe. They showed me the way within Zeta. It wasn't until I stepped on Xavier's campus that 
I saw the sisterhood and the camaraderie as well how tight that niche was at that time. That showed me a lot of things, and I do not regret my 18 years. I rep my life membership, born and raised within my own chapter, and I joined four days before Christmas of 2005. And I am the only state at my school that outshined the Deltas. No shade. Well, I'll, I'll hop on. Um, so I just want to throw in. So I um, so I have all alphas and AKAs in my family. Um, and high school going into, so I went to a residential high school. So we lived on campus and then moving to college. So I had a lot of close friends that were Delta. So I was kind of, you know, looking around, looking around. Um, never really planned to join, was never interested in a sorority, but um, once I got on campus, was dating a guy who ended up crossing Sigma, and that's how I kind of got sucked into the group and just found them very welcoming, um, and so that was kind of what made me make the decision that I wanted to become a Zeta, um, and so uh, now I am married to a Sigma, so we are a complete blue and white family, not just constitutionally bound, but marriage license bound. Um, so it's it's really cool. I actually love the the relationship between um, Sigmas and Zetas. Um, it, the, the Sigma International President, I teach his kids. Well, he's my husband's chapter brother, so he was up at the school today. We clowning around. It's just like one big family, so I absolutely adore it. Shana, can I share a fun fact? It'll be really quick. Um, everybody, my mom is an AKA. That's all that's in my family. And it just, I respect AKA. I've been around it all my life, but it just didn't fit for me. And so when I was starting my process, I was hiding it from my mom originally. So, so I would keep everything over my cousin's house who lived around the corner and she, we're, we're close, but she couldn't figure out why we were extra close and hanging out all the time. So it ended up my grandmother saw all of my stuff and started talking to my mom about it. Like, do you know what this data, whatever stuff is? Because Carla has a lot of stuff over Candy's house. My mother never said anything. So when I was finally made and I became a member of the sisterhood, we called it a Zeta Christmas. And it so happened, my mother came and she paid for my crossing jacket and my briefcase. And she said she knew the entire time that I was going through the process of being a Zeta. She just didn't say anything. And she couldn't figure out why I didn't tell her. But she thought it was hilarious how I was hiding it because I was really trying to hide it from her because I didn't want her to be upset. But she, she understood why I made the choice that I made. Those stories are so compelling because that's in part why we, even when we decided on our lineup, why we included this particular session title in the in our in our presentations for the for the month. Because the impact, and I think I'm jumping ahead. We're not even through. I'm sorry, uh, but the impact that you guys can have just. The impact that those the others have made on you is the impact that you have on your students. Um, whether you think it or not, like uh, like it was said, it's like everybody, they're watching, right? They're watching what we do and, and, and how we serve. And it's our walk matches our talk. And so uh, those are very inspiring. Um, thank you for Thank you all. We're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep going so we can get to everyone. And then we have some, uh, some uh, activities we're going to do together. Do we have Sigma, Sigma Gamma Rho? You know you do. I know. I'm looking <laughs> right at you. <laughs> Well, I already shared a little bit, but I guess I can share my Sigma story because it really relates to technology and computer science. Uh, like I said, Sigma Gamma Rho is the only D9 sorority founded at a predominantly white organization, not just a predominantly white organization. Like I said, the Grand Wizard 
uh, of the Ku Klux Klan at the time in a state where one third of the white male population were registered members of the Ku Klux Klan was founded right there in Indianapolis, Indiana at Butler University. While we were founded at Butler, it's not to say Butler was without fault because at the time they practiced segregation. Every academic year, they only allowed 10 African-American students on their campus. So this organization was found. We really did not have any connection to the other uh, historically black sororities and fraternities, but we were founded by seven educators. And that's part of my stigma story. As I was academically successful and triumphant in all things, I was often separated from my community and my peers, pulled into a uh, the Caucasian community where there can only be one successful black person. There can't be more than one. There can only be one to represent all black people who were successful. And uh, just going, through school and going through professional opportunities and conference and conventions, sometimes we are the only melanated face in the crowd. That speaks to me because Sigma Gamma Rho, we were the melanated people amongst people who did not look like us, but yet we still were successful. We still, we still connected with community and benefited the community. So that really spoke to me and that is why I was drawn to Sigma Gamma Rho versus everything else because growing up, we had AKs, we had the Zetas, especially from my mom's side in Mississippi. The Zetas grow thick in Mississippi. Uh, we had the Deltas when we came over to Texas, especially in Houston. <laughs> For some reason, there are so many Deltas in Houston. So we had everything else, but that that standing alone and still standing triumphant, that spoke to me. And, and, and that's where I am in, in, this, in, the, in my career journey, in my academic journey, when I'm, I'm working on my doctorate, I still find myself feeling alone because I don't see faces like mine, but I know I have my Sigma Gamma Rho community behind me. And anytime I, I don my gold and royal blue, but usually it's mostly gold, and go to a brand new city, I swear I will hear our call down the street, around the corner, we make ourselves known, we connect. I have an international, international slew of sisters I can call on, all in different occupations and different um, different countries, different communities that I can call on. And we are not a monolith, but our diversity within our organization has benefited us to last and, and celebrate our 100 years finally. And I'm a very proud member of Sigma Gamma Rho, and you will always see me with some sort of pair on, even if I'm, even if I'm in non-black spaces. You will, you can easily identify me as a Sigma Gamma Rho. In any meeting, in any any, <laughs> you'll see Corey. You'll see Corey in in anything, in any any setting. So. Uh, we had someone to join us. I, I told y'all to keep reaching out to people. So I had to put out the bat symbol and I asked somebody who was able to join. I told them y'all tried to hold them down, but I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. So we can, yeah. So let, oh, let's catch him up. So welcome. Uh, everyone, we have a, a, a guest joining us this evening who he's, he's a guest as, as, as all of us are. Um, well, all of you are. But what we're doing is we are sharing a little bit about our sororities or fraternities and then emphasis on you. Like what made you join? Tell us a little bit about where you are now with your fraternity. Man, you got a lot going on there, Shana. All right, so, um, well, in 1914 at Howard U, there began a great legion of the Royal Blue. From that day forth, without a doubt, Phi Beta Sigma came to rock the house. I mean, we got, I mean, we could do some, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, founded in 1914 by the most noble and honorable big brother, Abram Langston Taylor, Big Brother Charles Ignatius Brown, and Big Brother Leonard Francis Morris. Um, this was um, an awesome band of brothers. We are the inclusive we. Um, we believe in, um, as, as the slide is saying, being inclusive with our membership practices, 
um, and judging people on their own merits. Um, I, I heard something really funny recently that it's like, um, I heard somebody say this, there's always a stereotype with a lot of the different D9 groups, like the Kappas may be this, the Qs might be this, the Alphas might be this. I'm gonna let y'all fill in those blanks because y'all probably already have an idea of what some of those stereotypes are. And But I heard one about Sigmas that I never heard before and I thought it was hilarious. Uh, he said, Sigmas just like to hang out with who they like to hang out with. And I'm like, that's kind of funny. And it just, it, but it felt, it felt true to our chapter. It was like, just that we, we were diverse. We all kind of looked a little bit different, did a couple of different things, but um, really did a lot of different things in that way. We're having our conclave in Houston this year. So it's, that's going to be a big event coming up in the next few months. We've been getting, um, getting everything led up towards that. Why did I become a Sigma? Because, um, because everybody, when I actually sat down and did a, a crucial look at it, um, a lot of people in my family were Greek, but most of the men were Sigmas. And I never really just kind of put that together until when I was in college. And I was like, oh, wow, this is, it was, it was that or another one. And we won't talk about what that was going to be, but you know, we ended up making that decision. And it's one that I don't def I definitely don't regret. Um, and that's about, I mean, I don't have a bunch else, man. I love the fact that y'all are doing, I can see why y'all are so busy with the um, black affinity group that y'all meet every week. Y'all, y'all, y'all be getting together doing the work. So I am, um, <laughs> I'm happy that, um, that, that, that Shana and Tanya reached out to me to say, Hey, you're missing it. Get here. I thought you was going to put up the slides of me stepping, man. I, I was, I sent it to you. You didn't get it. Slides of you stepping. It wasn't, I mean, not slides. It was the link. No, I did not see the link of you stepping. Oh, man, that was supposed <laughs> to be playing in the background the whole time. You tripping. <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna let you talk with your sorrows about that because I I missed that. I missed now. I do know that it's on social media. That's what I sent you the social media link. Maybe I didn't send it to you. Let me see. What I might have sent it to Tanya. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send that on that way. I'm gonna say maybe you sent it to Tanya, but I didn't see you send me the link to no. Okay, it is what it is. But you knew how to find it. But uh. We hearing and respecting all of D9. I'll drop it in. I'll drop it in the chat if anybody wants to um to watch some high <laughs> quality stuff in. Did y'all see that stepping on? Did y'all see that stepping on Good Morning America? Everybody was poorly represented except for the blue and white because the Sigma and the Zeta both went off. Everybody else, y'all was y'all would have been upset at that. That was a. Did y'all see it? Y'all no. see? It? Oh, I did see that going around social media. I didn't know what it was from. Yeah. Okay. In America, step in. They was terrible. The iotas was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life, and and the and the the, the kappas were pretty bad. Yeah, somebody said it looked like a sixth grade step show. Yeah, <laughs> it was. What? Bad. Yeah, it was bad. I didn't look that up. I I didn't, I didn't even know. When was this? This was recent. It was like this week. It, it happened this week. It was. Oh, it was. I can post it. It's going to take me a minute to send it from one device to another, but I can post uh, it. Alan, do you see the chat? <laughs> hey, I'm going to say, I have to say, I disagree. Were we watching the same thing? Maybe we were watching something David, different. David, you, <laughs> David, you. David, he was maybe not something good. Different. David, he was not good, David. Maybe it was something different. <laughs> David. I mean, maybe people I mean, have different. He was different, just patting his cane. Standards. Stop that. Stop that. Yeah. <laughs> so we might have, these people might have different standards. That's what it is. Viewpoints, different viewpoints. You see different. Thank, thank, different thank you, my good sister, my good kind <laughs> of sister. I, I appreciate. I appreciate that. <laughs> Not the divine to drop that in the drop I, that in the chat. Dana, it might be worth hitting the. It might be hitting the worth hitting the click just to. It might be worth it. I'm telling right, you. like that's what a screen share. Let's play it. Play it right now, Shada. Come on. This is it is it is worth the the couple of seconds for David to stand on this. I want you to stand on this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, a cute right, that's that's, that's your friend. Know. You gonna stick beside him? So what is your audio? I can't hear. Oh, can you hear? Yeah, I got my audio shared. I got my audio shared. I muted it because it's a commercial, so I'm gonna skip the commercial. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I I mean I. I I don't know. I have not seen it, so I don't know what we get ready to see. Black History Month. Yeah, don't look at just fast forward to when they step in, so you can really understand the, um, the foolishness that took place. The divine. It's quite a crew right here. We have a performance coming up by students from Howard. My forty year old self could have won. Unity step. Look, here we go. Oh yeah, do some volume. Kappa from Jackson State shares more on history. 
Okay. For more than a century, Black Greek letter. Or Did it? What happened? Did it freeze? Because it's trying not to play. There it goes. Hold on. That is have been a rooted source of pride on college campuses. A power echoed in our chants and felt in our steps. Founded at a time when racism and discrimination plagued higher education, the four sororities and five fraternities that make up the National Panhellenic Council, also dubbed the Divine Nine, unite under a collective. They purpose. start stepping at about four fifty-five. And the power. Oh, of the they understood that their individual. My dear mom pledged at Howard University, and I was blessed to recently become an honorary AKA, and that's mama there on the there campus at, at HU. There she is, and we are joined now by students from your mom's alma mater, uh, the Divine Nine, the university's Divine Nine. Thank you all so much for, being, for, for sharing with us the yeah. steps you will. I want to start asking you, Naya, uh, you know, skip to the Divine <laughs> What has it been like to be a part of a sorority? How big is that a part of your college experience? Yes, so sisterhood has obviously been something that I've gained, but I've also loved being able to serve in a capacity with things like this. I really love the art. Yeah, you know? What does that mean to you? It means everything to me. So, you know, my family's legacy in this fraternity started with my dad on the campus of North Carolina a &C. So, uh, simply put, it means everything. <laughs> the work is kids. <laughs> Family affair, yeah, you cherish that. Tell folks what they're about to say. So you all are about to witness a unity step. Usually we all in our specific organization step with our brothers and our sisters, but today we like to come together and showcase the Divine Nine, and we're all going to do a step together, but also showcase our individual style from our organizations as well. Isn't that wonderful? That's awesome. Okay, I mean, it's, it's standing room only here in the studio right now. <laughs> Thank you all morning long for this unity step, and you're about to see just how powerful yeah. it is, right? All right. So bring, it, bring it. Let's do it. I want y'all to co-sign this, for real. <laughs> oh. Oh. What is volume at? <laughs> Seems he may have needed a cane. <laughs> I don't know why you didn't muted this. I have to say they did okay. They did. Yeah. They just said that was interesting. I missed that. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Thank you so so much for coming out here and sharing, sharing the sharing, you know, you know, some I don't know. Thank you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> 
What y'all think? I think it was bad. Would you say I said, my, my Sarah, she, she did well. I'm going to say that. She you did well. Oh, national TV in case you drop it. But you have to do, you can't lie. I twirl it like you would normally. I think you were a little harsh. <laughs> I'm going to say, Carla, why your face like that? <laughs> We could do a unity step at our next live event. My two, my two organizations, Shana, they were good. That was the Zetas and the Sigmas. I'm good. I'm happy. We are they represented me, so I'm good. <laughs> so, but that iota, I was a little confused. I feel the shade. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna say that we just giving D nine love. You know, give it to the to the to the young folks. You know, they that. They went on national TV and tried. I don't know who selected them, but they went on national TV and tried. Bless their heart. <laughs> Shana, you all, Shana, you never say anything mean, even if it's the truth. <laughs> I said the truth. I said the truth. Uh -uh. He was Cora, real political. Corey said they parents on the payroll. <laughs> Let's see. We can have a. Uh, we can have our students. Code that holds scripture. And there are, there, there are resources for that. There are resources for that. So, speaking of Iota, you're back on track, right? Right, right, right. We only have a few minutes left, but the Iota's were founded in 1963, September 19th, 1963, at Morgan, at my alum, Morgan State University. Um, and they were founded on the belief that men should be more concerned with the building of the traditions not just celebrating them. So we have a, just to, to I guess we'll conclude with this, um, but we have a jam board for you all that can we can use to interact. Funny, did Ellen jump in and jump out? I think he did. <laughs> it's okay. He brought enough, I believe, in that brief period of time. Um, <laughs> What can we do to increase the awareness of D9 pioneers and CS and STEM? So we, we want you to um, add your thoughts to this question and definitely feel, feel free to come off mute and share. Yeah, I think you're wrong. We don't need to do the breakout room all because I, mm -hmm. I just posted the uh, jam board bitly in the, in the chat. And the second question is, yeah, we can, yeah, how do we leverage our organizations to broaden participation in computing? So I think I'm going to play. We have about five minutes left. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to charge you with two things. One, uh, add suggestions onto this Jamboard for us that we can come back and revisit. And two, I'm going to charge you if you are a member of D9, to share this with us and with social media. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to share an image of yourself representing your fraternity or sorority, or sorority and just make this statement and I'll drop the statement in the chat, but it will be I and your name am a member of and name your fraternity or, uh, fraternity or sorority and I am an advocate for CS education. So that's gonna be the statement that we want you to share it. And we're gonna to try to put it all together to kind of sum up our CS homecoming um, as this would help us to then share with others. Yes, please, Corey, be safe. <laughs> uh, don't worry though, I'm gonna tag you on social media. So when I do mine, Tag someone you know that might work. Michelle, go ahead. Yeah, yeah Shana, I was just going to ask, are you going to, um, can you post it in the, the statement in the slide too? Because I'm driving, so I can't oh, grab it now. Good. Absolutely. That Thank way you. then everybody can access these slides. I like that. Thank you. Thank you.
I sure can. Yeah, I just put, did it show up? Let's see, is anyone posting on here? Oops. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I was on the other page here. Yeah. And I was gonna say, definitely share with maybe, like I know most have organizations that they work with students. Mm -hmm. um, so share what that is. We want, I mean, I don't know everyone's. I know mine. Right. You but I don't know everyone's. You guys still do jump, jump to gym? Mm hmm Yeah. Mm hmm we just, ours is Youth Leadership Initiative now. Um, but there's this- We also we have Embody for boys. So we have- um, What did you guys boys one? Yeah, it's called Embody. Oh, okay. Our, our YLI goes, it's both. <laughs> oh, see. oh, before, I know some people are leaving. Before you go, you know we need a photo and everybody has to show what we representing if you are representing so we have two minutes i'm gonna give you 60 seconds to get it together and we'll take a group shot yeah. if we're not representing you still want us on the picture absolutely absolutely So glad to have you, Tony. <laughs> All right, so we got 60 seconds. Michelle and Amber, be safe. I don't know where y'all are. Shana, is my is my Zoom profile pic showing up? Yeah. Okay, well, hold on. I'm about to, um, I'm going to pull over real quick at a gas station where it's some light. I'll get on real quick. Give me one second. Okay. We gonna hold on. We gonna hold on. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Make it presentable. On the wrong page. Huh? I put my sticky note on the wrong page. Uh, Y'all hold. Bear with us. Oh, there she go. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can get everybody's face. Okay, let me get my shirt in. Yeah, let's see that. <laughs> there we go. All right, I'm just going to make my background red. That way it's clear. Yeah. All right, yeah, that way you can, I, you can see it a little bit. Look, I'm like, you can see it a little bit. Kind of turn to yeah, like everybody trying to represent. <laughs> Oh, my head, my headphones. You good. Oh, Michelle, you did good. Phil, turn your camera on. Thank you so much, Tanisha, for joining. We'll make sure you get all of this information. Oh, and lastly, before you jump, it, there is a meetup this weekend um, at the Equity in Action Summit. And if you, come on, Philip. I thought I seen you for a second. Yeah, there you go. Really, Philip? <laughs> oh, it's nice. Um, but if you if you are going to be attending, please jump on. It'll be during lunch. There will be a Black Affinity Group meetup. What all the opportunities we can to stay connected. Mm -hmm. All right, ready? Five, four, three, two. Oh yeah! Dang it! I don't have a hand. You know, I got to do both hands. I can't, I don't have a hand. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, somebody else might have to take a picture too. I don't know how to do it with both. I don't know. I don't know yeah. how to do it with both. It'll be all right. I, I have to figure it out later. All right, five. I might have to take another Zoom picture. Five, four, three, two. Got it. Yay. Uh, <laughs> that's a cute picture i will drop it in the group i will also put it in the virtual community along with all of the notes and you all will receive a follow-up 
Um, and I will also put the statement in so everybody can share updated photos. Thank you all for joining us tonight. The slides did have a lot more stuff on them, so we'll, <laughs> we encourage you to uh, access that those resources. Yes, there's lots of resources in the slide deck, and we'll make sure that they're in the email too. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, Shana. Thank you all for joining.